Hi, welcome to my channel today. I'm giving you the top five of Wednesday from last Wednesday. I really wanted to do it, but I got the 24-hour flu. There was just no way I could do it. Top five of Wednesday is the group that is currently ran by Samantha at Thoughts on Tones and Ginger Reads Laney. I will have the um, link to the Goodreads group in the description down below. But the top five Wednesday was, let me get it right, bookish things you're a Grinch about. And these are bookish things you hate that are dumb. This was supposed to be petty, so it's nothing too serious in my list. So let's get right into the pettiness. Number five is when authors spell out like sounds or noises in their book. Like when they say, boom, the book went as it slammed into the desk like I hate that because in my mind I get into this over complicated like how am I supposed to pronounce that is is that the right sound I'm making because if you've been on my channel for a little bit you know I read out loud so I hate when they spell it out you know whatever four is going to be a long chapters with no page breaks I am the type of reader who cannot put a book down and walk away from it until I finish out the chapter I'm currently in. So when you have authors that have like 15 to 20 pages in one chapter and there's no page break, I have to read that whole entire chapter before I can get up and do something because it will bug me constantly while I'm doing whatever it is I need to do or want to do. It will bug me that I did not finish that chapter. So please, I employ authors and future authors of the world, add page breaks when you have a long chapter. Three is when books in the series aren't numbered. That's when you get spoiled trying to find out which book to read next. That happened to me with Tahar Mafi's Shadow Me series. I finished reading Shadow Me, and then I forgot the order of them, and I had to read the back, and that's when I found out um, what happens in the last book, and it kind of spoiled, it did spoil me for, for the second book, and kind of tainted my reading experience, so please number your books, it's not that difficult, Cassandra Clare does it with um her Mortal Instruments, and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, her Infernal Devices, there's a lot of other authors that do it. Just put it on the spine somewhere so we don't even have to read the backs of the books and we don't get spoiled. Coming in at number two is the fact that it takes a year for us in the States to get paperbacks. This is really annoying because I am someone who's fresh out of college, working, paying back student loans. I love books so much, but I can't always afford to read everything I want to read. Sometimes a very popular book at the library, they don't get many copies and it'll take me a whole entire year to be able to read it until the paperback comes out. And I know that they do it in the UK, if I'm not mistaken. They put out the paperback and the hardcover at the same time because hardcovers are extremely expensive in the UK and I don't see why they can't do it here. You know, I think that they would have way more sales on a book if someone could have the option to choose a hardcover or a paperback when a new release comes out. And I could read more of the books that I want to read that year. And number one is oversized paperbacks. My example of this is the um, An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir before there was the cover change. I just really hate those oversized paperbacks. I feel like they're a money grab. Like nothing about them enhances the reading experience. The font is still the same. The spacing is still the same. And the only difference is they get to charge you two or three extra dollars. So I think those are like 12 to $13. Whereas a standard size paperback is like 10 to 11 and that is my very petty, bookish things I'm a Grinch about list. In the comment section down below, get petty with me and tell me some bookish things that you hate. And 
as always, until we meet again.